Radwan, thank you for the invitation. Uh, thank you to my co-panelists, everybody who is uh, logging in from around the world. Uh, I, I might not need all of the 15 minutes. Uh, the question of the panel is, is there a path forward for democracy in Tunisia? <clears throat> Obviously, this is a question about the future. No one can really know the future. Uh, I'm also not on the ground in Tunisia, obviously, so I don't really report with any kind of special authority or insight. But what I'd like to do instead is to make um, eight very concise and specific points uh, separated into two uh, categories. The first, I, I'm going to call headwinds, different kinds of factors that I think are working against uh, a path forward for democracy in Tunisia. And then after that, what I'm going to call tailwinds or a few factors that I think do still leave us with hope for a path forward for democracy in Tunisia. The first factor is what Tarek just spoke about, which is the very, very uh, disappointing, discouraging, and even disgusting support from the West for Qais Sayed, uh, particularly uh, Europe. I uh, was surprised to hear some of the positive things that Tarek said about the heart of Europe being in favor uh, from my perspective, uh, this may be a little bit too cynical, but I don't see any alternative to what Europe appears to care most about is the issue of migration. And so as long as Sayed is promising to do things about uh, the flow of migrants to Europe, he sort of gets a, not a blank check, but in this case, I guess a 800 million euro check um, from, from Italy and other countries in the European Union. And that is, of course, extremely disappointing because when you have uh, some kind of democratic coup or authority, excuse me, anti-democratic coup or authoritarian backsliding, you start to look for various sorts of countervailing uh, sources of power that would push against this. And as far as I can tell, none of those um, are coming from outside. And in fact, again, as Tarek said, uh, all of the outside pressure from Abu Dhabi and, uh, and uh, other countries appears to be uh, supporting the coup. The second factor that I'm uh, uh, considering a sort of headwind is that the opposition does appear to be in a kind of waiting mode. As Tarek just said, uh, Europe does not see a united opposition. Uh, whether or not the opposition is united, it appears to be in a position of waiting for some other kind of opportunity. There's obviously, and for good reason, a focus on uh, political prisoners right now, a focus on campaigns to generate um, uh, domestic and international outrage against uh, political prisoners. But it's not clear to me that the opposition has a certain uh, uh, strategy for how they want to overturn um, the dictatorship. <clears throat> Third factor is, and I, if I'm wrong here, I'm very happy to be corrected. <clears throat> as far as I can tell, Qais Sayed's repression appears to be mostly against the political class. Now, it's fairly widespread. It's not just against the Islamists. <clears throat> there are also leftist and other secular leaders that have been imprisoned. <clears throat> um, but the fact that his repression, even though it's widening, <clears throat> um, it does appear to be targeted against the political class. And this may serve to a certain extent uh, to temper popular resentment and popular anger uh, against the regime. <clears throat> the fourth factor, as I see it, <clears throat> is that despite uh, <clears throat> the, the, the apparent lack of enthusiasm for Syed, uh, I believe that there is probably still lagging popular dissatisfaction with the democratic transition, with parliament, so on and so forth. There's still a memory of the kinds of things that led people to either support the coup two years ago or to be ambivalent or to not have strong feelings of support uh, for parliament. And so uh, uh, to the extent that a successful opposition needs um, a sense of what would follow uh, 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 the dictatorship, what people would be being led into, my sense is there's still probably a, a, a lagging sense that the democratic transition was not uniformly popular. Uh, there was a lot of resentment against parliament across the um, uh, uh, the ideological spectrum. And uh, I suspect that that still uh, remains one of the factors uh, uh, in favor of the coup 
and the ongoing dictatorship. And the fifth factor is that despite looking like he is half dead, or despite looking kind of skeletal or like he's a villain from a certain from a movie about what you would imagine a kind of uh, a grotesque creature to be, Kai Sayed is relatively young. He is only 65 years old. His demise is not imminent, probably. And so uh, waiting out uh, this particular dictatorship does not strike me as the most uh, uh, optimistic um, uh, way forward. Now, having said that, I do think that there are at least three um, sources of optimism. First is that all of the factors <clears throat> that were on Tunisia's side since 2011 and before, I think are still to a large extent in play. So there's a reason why Tunisia had a relatively uh, a successful transition, a relatively bloodless transition, and uh, was able to last for 10 years unlike um, Egypt, not to mention the countries that immediately descended into civil war. <clears throat> um, these include that the oppositional coalition was broad. It was not limited to one ideological position, either leftist or Islamist or secular or anti-secular. Uh, there was a long history of cross-party communication and cooperation going back <clears throat> uh, to uh, the communication between various segments of the opposition abroad in Paris and in London, uh, going back to years before the uh, 2011 revolution. Uh, and I believe that in Tunisia, perhaps more than in even in countries like Egypt, my hope and my sense is that the Tunisian people still have a kind of popular self-belief. They know that they overthrew a dictator. Uh, they know that this kind of thing is possible. And... Um, the coup did not happen through a kind of overwhelming show of violence like it happened in uh, Egypt. It was a kind of slow constitutional presidential coup that has been, of course, uh, very, very repressive, but um, I would hope did not uh, lead to the sense that resistance and opposition to the state is futile. The second factor that I think supports hope in some kind of dem uh, uh, democratic return <clears throat> is just how awful of a president Kais Syed has been. He has had an awful performance as a ruler. Everything that drove the opposition to parliament <clears throat> between 2019 and 2011 is worse. <clears throat> the economic crisis is worse. Uh, <clears throat> the um, environmental crisis is worse. Concerns about migration, so on and so forth. So there's no reason for Tunisians to believe that dictatorship makes things better, that dictatorship is a better alternative to democracy. <clears throat> so he's been an awful uh, president. He's been an awful uh, ruler. He has not um, <clears throat> given any hope that dictatorship can be more efficient, that it can be a better way to deliver economic and health results and other sorts of things. So <clears throat> I suspect that there was an underlying uh, range of um, attitudes toward him, towards him that range from outside, uh, excuse me, to outright opposition and disdain to disgruntlement, to ambivalence, to a lack of care. And so I, I, I believe that um, that is a source of, of potential optimism. And finally, and this is more of a question, but I'm not sure that Qais uh, Syed is very successful at creating what we might call an apparatus of rule that is institutionally invested in dictatorship. <clears throat> so uh, the reason why dictatorships are so difficult to successfully overthrow, and like Tarek said, uh, a democratic transition is not a one-time event or success. It's a um, multi-year or multi-decade process of sustaining democracy and replacing forms of rule with something else. So dictatorships rely on all kinds of apparatuses of rule that are very, very difficult to dislodge. Perhaps a ruling party, an entrenched bureaucracy, military interests, media and cultural elites, a permanent administrative apparatus, what is sometimes called, uh, it's now sort of become a cliche, but we're, what we refer to as the deep state. I am not sure that he is very efficient uh, and very driven to create these kinds of things that would make the opposition to the coup more about just opposing the person of, of, of Qais Syed. 
And so um, I think he's somebody that very often alienates his own supporters. I know there are lots of people <clears throat> that either welcomed the coup or were somewhat ambivalent about it. And he has imprisoned some of them. He has alienated some of his closest advisors. <clears throat> he is, uh, his, his personality is clearly atrocious, <clears throat> uh, uh, touchy and imperious. Uh, and so I think that there are uh, some reasons to believe that his personalistic way of ruling is not conducive to creating an alternative apparatus uh, that is entrenched, that is bigger than one person, and that is much more uh, uh, difficult to overthrow than just overthrowing a single ruler. So I don't have a lot of more specific things to report about what's going on with the opposition or what's going on with popular sentiment, but as a political scientist and political theorist looking from outside, those are the factors that I think uh, uh, leave me pessimistic, uh, leave me very, very sad about what's happened to Tunisia, a country that was a source of hope and inspiration for uh, uh, people throughout the Arab world and throughout the democracy-loving world, but then also a number of factors that leave me with hope and leave me with the belief that, that the democratic uh, miracle in Tunisia is not yet over. Thank you.